Hi everyone. In the following video, I'm going to explain how to use the CLO pattern shape tools, internal shape tools, and also explain pattern symmetry, linking patterns, copying patterns, and cloning patterns. If you have any questions regarding the navigation settings or how to change them, you can refer to the foundation videos which are linked below. I am using a three button mouse and my view control settings are set for regular mouse. To begin this tutorial, we are going to start with a blank empty workspace. And we are going to begin with the shape tools. So the shape tools are located in the 2D toolbar about center top and they are nestled into a menu. If you left click and hold down on this icon, you will see the polygon, the rectangle, and the ellipse tool listed. We're going to start with the rectangle tool. The rectangle tool and the ellipse tool work very similarly. I'll go through each of those and then explain the polygon version. Just so I have a point of reference while I'm creating my shapes, I'm going to import an avatar into the workspace and draw my pieces around that focal point in the 2D window. And to simply freehandedly draw a square rectangle in your 2D window, you're going to left click hold and drag your cursor. If you hold the shift key down at this moment, you will constrain the proportions. And when you release your left click, it will put the shape down. So that is the first option of how to draw a rectangle. The second option is by simply left clicking and releasing in the 2D window. And then that will allow you to type in an exact width and height for your shape. These options below for replicate, interval, and angle, they will duplicate your shape. And then these will just spread their placement around in the 2D window. The angle will place them down on an angle. But for the sake of the tutorial, I am just going to create one shape. And then when you hit OK, that shape will place down. Now I'm going to move to the ellipse tool. So to draw a freehand ellipse, you will left click, hold, and drag your cursor. If you hold shift, it'll constrain the proportions. And when you release left click, that shape will place down. So that's your first option for making an ellipse. So the ellipse has the second option also of left clicking and releasing that will allow you to draw your ellipse by either circumference, radius, or a diameter. For the radius and diameter, you have to put in both height and width. Or for the circumference, just one measurement. And then if you hit OK, it will place your shape down. While I explain the polygon tool, I'm going to delete these shapes so I have an open space to work with. I can hold Shift and select more than one shape and hit Delete and switch back to my polygon tool. So this tool works more where you are drawing your shape as you move and place points down. If you left click and release, you'll have put a segment point down and you'll have a segment attached to your cursor. You will continue to move around and click to put points down to create your shape. If you need your shape to be curved, if you hold the control key down and left click as you're moving, those points will be curved points. As you're moving, if you make a mistake where you click down and either hold control when you shouldn't have or meant to hold control, if you hit backspace on your keyboard, it will undo one point step at a time. And then you can continue on with your shape, either holding control or releasing control to have a segment point when you need it or a curve point. With this tool, you must go back to your starting point in order to left click on the original point and close your shape. When it's finished, you'll notice that it highlights and fills in with white. After you place your shape down, you'll be able to edit it with the editing tools and that'll be explained in the following tutorial. For this really basic tutorial, I'm just going to show you how to make shapes and make internal shapes, no matter how it turns out to look. Now I'm going to explain some other options that you have when you're using this tool to draw your shapes. To do this, I'm just going to move this pattern out of the way and work around the silhouette again. Then I'm going to hit reset 2D arrangement just to get my piece moved in 3D as well. 
you will always left click and release once to start, but then all the clicks after that, as you're moving, you can hold shift and it'll give you lock guides. And you can right click in the middle of this movement and type in a specific placement for that next point. So the key is that you're still holding your left mouse button down, but you're right clicking simultaneously and pressing them at the same time to get this menu up. There's also this thing where if you choose mirror creation, changing the axis will change what direction this mirrors from. I'm going to keep it at local and then hit OK. This only works with segment points. So at some areas you'll need to hold control and left click freely. And then at any point you can right click and control that distance by an exact length. When you hit OK, you will still be in the function of the tool. And then when you get back to the front, you click once and it will close the shape. One thing about this mirror creation is that it comes with symmetry. So what you apply to one side will also change the other. So now I'm going to show you one more option that you have when you're drawing with the polygon tool. Instead of making the curvature areas with curve points, it will make them with Bezier curves instead. So to demonstrate that, I'm going to delete this piece I have here. I'm going to delete this other piece as well. Left clicking once for my starting point. But then for the next section where I want this to have a curved area behind it, I'm going to click, hold, and drag. I'm left clicking and holding my cursor down and moving up and down or around, and this will shape this with Bezier handles. When you release, the other side of your point is also going to have a handle. To eliminate that, you go back to that point and left click once. It will remove the handle. moving around to place your points. So if you prefer this method, you may want to just kind of decide some good locations to click, hold, and drag when you're moving. It has the same option to hit backspace as you're moving to go back one point step at a time. But here I'm not holding control at any point, I'm simply dragging as I place my point down and then left clicking on a point when I want to remove the handle from the new segment side, then continuing free left click where I don't want curve and then maybe clicking and dragging where I do want the curve. You can certainly mix these two if you prefer. I can choose to hold control at some areas and not others, that's fine and still click to close your shape back. I'll explain in the next tutorial how to edit these areas that have either curve points or bezier handles for the shaping. For now, we're just keeping it at basic shapes and internal shapes. So to get that type of symmetry that I had before where I had a left and right side and they moved and edited together, I'm going to create that for this version with the edit pattern tool. If you right click on this center segment, you will find unfold symmetric editing with sewing. This is the version of unfolding that will give you symmetry on both sides. I am going to copy and paste this piece I made so I have a front and a back. Using the transform pattern tool, 
right click on this piece and you will see copy. Then you can right click and choose paste, left click and put that piece down. Arrange my pieces. and sew my side seams and my shoulder together. This type of symmetry will also create sewing on both of the sides. And then I'm gonna simulate to get the garment on. If you're joining us for part two and you'd like an already completed file to follow along, Go to the link below for practice files and download and open this to continue learning internal lines. I'm also going to create just a really simple rectangle to demo some really simple concepts about internal shapes on. So go ahead and draw that rectangle if you're following along. I'll explain the basics here on the floating rectangle and then I'll explain some things about how internal shapes work when you have pattern symmetry. The internal shape tools are nestled here directly next to the pattern shape tools. If you left click and hold on the internal tool, you will get the options for internal polygon, internal rectangle, eternal ellipse with the addition of a dart. So first I'm going to explain the rectangle and the ellipse on this really simple rectangle that I drew. They work basically exactly the same as this version does where you left click hold and drag to freely create. You left click and release to create your rectangle by a specific height width, duplicates, or this one comes with the addition of the position from the pattern outline either measured from center or to edge. Um, so if you were starting with a really specific placement And then you hit OK to place your shape down. The ellipse tool will work the same. Left click, hold and drag to start your shape. Hold shift if you want to constrain the proportions. Left click if you want an exact size. And also with the, the same replicate and the addition of the positioning options from the edges or from the center that internal rectangle comes with. You can hit OK to put that stuff down. The internal polygon has essentially all of the same type of actions and options that you had with the pattern polygon tool, but with this version, You do not have to close your shape. So you can double click to end. Another option you have for ending your shape is left clicking once and just hitting enter on your keyboard and that will release and or cut it off at the last point where you clicked. But you also have the option to close your shape as well. So you can Draw a shape on a half. If you accidentally hold the corner, I'm trying to draw a heart here. If you accidentally hold the corner, you can hit backspace and then go back. You can also click to close your shape when you're drawing. And then just one small editing thing is the unfold option. So if you use the edit pattern thing, you can right click on this segment and choose unfold. Or while you're drawing, I'm going to delete some shapes that I drew just so I have some space to keep showing options.
when you were drawing the pattern shapes, you had a right click option. When you're on the internal polygon, you have the option to hold shift to lock your movements and you can right click in the middle of this action to draw by a specific length and mirror what you're doing. So if you choose mirror creation, then you'll have the axis. Now we have the position as well. I'm going to click OK and just keep moving and close my shape. The polygon tool is also used often just to draw straight lines. It's OK if lines cross over each other. That won't cause problems here. And these internal lines can become a number of things in the future after they've been drawn. This could become a pocket. It could become a top stitch detail. It could become a hole. It could become a placement or just a measurement that you need on your pattern at some location. Uh, they have a lot of opportunities to become different things in your creative process. So now that I've shown you the very basics of just how to draw them on a pattern piece, I'm going to explain a couple details about when you're using them on symmetrical patterns. I will delete this piece from my workspace and go back to my internal polygon tool. So when you have a symmetrical pattern, you do not have to draw across the entire pattern. You only have to draw something to the center marking and double click to end and it will show up on both sides of your pattern. If you do have symmetry and you do extend your internal onto the other side of your pattern that has the symmetry, when you double click and end that, it will show up on both sides of your pattern as well. So just be aware that if you don't really want this to extend all the way to the other side, you will stop at that center area and double click to end. or left click once, click once here, and then hit enter to end. It's the same action. If you accidentally click somewhere with the internal polygon when you meant to start somewhere else, you can just hit escape or backspace. They will both get you out of the function. Enter. Now we'll just go through some basic functions about seeing your internal lines. In the 3D window, I have a function on called show style lines right now. I just turned that off. It puts a black outline on all of the pattern outlines and internal lines in your 3D window. I have it on because it's good for tutorials, but if you shut it off, you will be able to see your internal lines or not maybe in your 3D window and this is the location where you would go to turn them on and off. So you'll notice when you turn them off, they have this almost dent in your fabric. I'm working in a very basic, just default simulation fabric, nothing specific applied. So we see that more prominently on this fabric. To get rid of that, in case anyone's wondering, the way that you would do this is if you select your edit pattern tool, this lets you select segments. You would click these and in the property editor, you would turn the feature called fold rendering off. When I check this off, those lines will not show as a crease. So if you ever get that in a location on your garment and you would like to get rid of it, you're going to use edit pattern, select that segment and turn fold rendering off. Last, I'm going to explain how the dart option works. This will create a fisheye dart. You'll notice that when you click on it, the little icon changes to this. So this works where you hover on your pattern, left click and drag, 
and you will be drawing a diamond shape that when you release will turn into a hole. This hole is meant to be sewn closed. So essentially you would go to your sewing tools and sew it shut. Because we have pattern symmetry, it applies to both sides. And then simulate to let it close. Just like the other tools that you have a freehand left click and drag draw option, you also have a left click and release option where here you can control your dart by really specifically the width on the left part of the dart, the width on the right part of the dart, and the height above and below. Um, I'm going to demonstrate something that might give you an error right now. If I type in a number where my pattern, where my internal line is extending off of the pattern, when I hit OK, I'm going to get this error message. If you try and end an internal line outside or any internal shape outside of a pattern, you will not be able to. You have to hit OK and make sure that when you hit OK to put that down, it actually is not off the pattern but completely on. And then you can hit OK and that will be fine as long as it's not over the edge. This also extends to the internal polygon tool. If you simply start, try and start outside of a pattern, you will get the error immediately. It'll say, please click within a pattern. And if you try and end outside of a pattern, it just won't even let you, it will release it. Moving your internals around, when you have something that meets at the center of your pattern, if you move away from the center, that thing will move as well from the center. So what you can do, I'm going to hit Control Z a couple of times, is you can hold Shift while you're sliding it up and down. That goes for any area. If you hold Shift while you move it up and down, it will give you a locking option. If you are making your patterns directly within Clo, it is a good workflow to initially create your patterns with a center front and center back seam. And while you're working on them and editing them, the type of symmetry that you may want to use is called cloned symmetry. So in this case, I do not have the other half of my front piece. This is not a regular copy and pasting option. If you right click on the pattern piece using the transform pattern tool, you will see the option for copy, paste, and mirror paste. The piece will not have symmetry. I'm going to delete this piece that I copied. The type of symmetry that we are going to use is called clone symmetry. The words clone pattern with linked editing are grayed out, but what you're going to actually select is this symmetric pattern with sewing. It has a shortcut of control D. And once you click it, you're going to have the pattern piece in your hand and you should left click on the alternate side of the silhouette generally to place this down. This is going to be my left and right front. So now when you've created this type of pattern, when you edit, both sides will edit together. You can work where you have a seam at the center front until you're further down in your project or closer to the end of your project. And then at the end, you can merge them together. But for now, we're going to keep them separated. And I am going to make a mirrored copy for my back piece. Using the transform pattern tool, right click on your piece and you have copy, and then you can right click and choose mirror paste. So this will be a regular copy and paste. I'm gonna use this just for the back. So when you place that piece down, it does not have a partner yet. 
you will right click on this piece and choose symmetric pattern with sewing. And this will be the other side to your back piece. I'll just do a little bit of simple edits. So I have a differentiation between my front and back. In the following video, I will go over how to use the editing tools in depth. But for here, I'm just going to make that simple change. Now your patterns also get a blue highlight and they get a line that just kind of attaches one piece to the other piece. So you can double check what piece it's linked to. Now I'm going to delete my back piece and show you another option that you have for symmetry. I went through this briefly in the last section, but I'll show it again. Using the edit pattern tool, you can right click on a segment and you will find unfold symmetric editing with sewing. That will unfold and then this piece will be linked each side as well. You can choose one or the other. The benefit to having this type of symmetry is just it gives you a little bit more control when you're using the internal polygon tool and making completely symmetrical garments that you don't end up drawing on the other side and you actually stop at the center front seam. And nothing will accidentally spill over to the center or other side if you accidentally go over that center area. Another detail about the type of symmetry where the pieces are connected together is that you will see a dotted line in the middle of this pattern piece. This line is not actually an internal line, it's just a visual marking. If you wanted to cut these pieces apart at the center back, you can draw an internal polygon straight down the center back, switch to your edit pattern tool, right click on that line you drew and choose cut or cut and sew. When a pattern piece has symmetry to itself, when you cut and sew it apart, it will automatically keep that cloned symmetry so sometimes you may alternate between having pieces split or not split, depending on what you're doing. And when you also cut them apart, the patterns leave behind that internal line that you had originally drawn. So I recommend you going in with your edit pattern tool, left clicking to select it. And another thing that you'll find is that you'll get a drop down menu where Clo is asking you which thing you actually want to select because the internal line is now exactly in the same location as the pattern edge. And when you left click and there are two things in the same location, you will get a menu to select one or the other. So I will select the red icon and then hit delete on my keyboard. And that will remove the internal line. It's really best practice not to have internal lines stacked on top of pattern edges, it can cause issues with the sewing. And then alternately, the way that we cut this apart, if you merge two pieces that are symmetrically linked together, by right clicking on the center front edge or whatever edge with the edit pattern tool and choose merge, those pieces will also maintain symmetry. So working with these two types of symmetry can really help your editing go really fast and eliminate double work. If for some reason you have symmetry and you do not want the pieces to be symmetrically linked anymore, and maybe you want to start working with an asymmetric garment, using the transform pattern tool, if you right click on patterns that are both clone patterns or symmetrically linked patterns, you will find an option for remove linked editing. Once you select that, you will notice that the blue highlight goes away 
and then any editing that you do will only apply to one side. Same with pattern pieces that are joined but have symmetry. If you use the transform pattern tool, right click on them, you will find remove linked editing. It will stay connected, but it will not have symmetry anymore. So now I have a few patterns where nothing here is symmetrically linked. You can relink or link pieces that you either copy or import if they are exactly the same in all of their areas by selecting both of those pieces with your transform pattern tool, right clicking on them and you will find now the option for apply linked editing. So in this case, we do not need a second piece or a clone. We just need to apply symmetry. So you will choose symmetric pattern with sewing in that section below. And it will link the two pieces. You can actually select an entire group of pieces. I'm going to make three rectangles that are all different sizes and then just make a regular copy and mirror paste. And then I will be able to link them You can actually select a group of pieces where they all have a matching pair. Select all of them, right click and choose the option for apply linked editing, symmetric pattern with sewing, and it will identify what matches what and link them all at the same time. This is useful if you're importing patterns that are created elsewhere and you want to link them. If you are having problems or getting an error that says something about cannot link patterns or cannot create symmetric pattern, we recommend just deleting one of the extra sides and making a symmetrically linked cloned copy. I'm going to remove the symmetry from this pattern set that I just created. Using remove linked editing, it'll make them all separated again. Just to demonstrate that if there's a slight difference between anything on the sets of patterns that you are trying to link. So here I just added a segment point. If you try and link those two pattern pieces, you will get an error message that tells you some patterns cannot be symmetrized. Just hit OK. In this case, we really just recommend deleting the piece, one of the sides that you cannot figure out what is different about it, and then just continuing to use the clone version of symmetric pattern with editing to generate the other side. So that concludes our tutorials for creating shapes, internal lines, and pattern symmetry. If you want to continue learning about editing, please check out the following tutorials in the series. They are linked below in the description. Thanks for watching.